Welcome to the workshop. Welcome. In this week's episode, we are going to bring our sliders and our pedal box together and make them one. <laughs> my name is Oliver and this is my dad, Andrew. He's a wicked engineer and my next door neighbor. We've always wanted to build a car together and make your own gear knob kit. There you go. <laughs> this might take a while. <laughs> Building a car and making memories with my dad. One of one, this is Project Mosquito. So you've all seen our pedal box. If you haven't seen our pedal box um, both yet, then it's there. But where have you been? Um, and last week we made some sliders with like cool nylon, Low friction, well, it's not low friction, is it? Not, not at the minute, but once it's, it's all polished yeah. up, it will be. It's smooth sliding and play free, which is more important than low yeah, friction. There's, yeah, it's, there's no there's no play in them at all. Because you don't want them to slide until they're sliding. And we've got our base plate. We yes. are using, using 10 mil thick nylon. Yeah, last week plate. I um, said that I was going to try and go and get a base plate. I've looked everywhere. Looked on the internet, nobody has anything um, without like importing stuff from from yeah. far afield, and it's just it's just ridiculous. Yeah, we, we, Wouldn't we, be here. We, we, we live in France, but we looked as far as Germany. But we came in here, looked at the shopping board, and went, "Well, we've got it, and it's there." Yeah. And the thing is, even though nylon's not the stiffest thing in the world, it actually doesn't need to be, considering the forces involved. Yeah, and it's also bolted to the floor, which is super stiff. It's bolted to one mil bead rolled steel, and then it's got these bolted to it, and this bolted to it, and then this will have a foot plate on top of that. So as a unit, the whole, whole thing, thing is, super is massively stiff enough. Um, and we don't have to bother about like dissimilar metals and stuff like that. And it might actually give us a little bit of isolation as well. Yeah. The nylon, which is nice. So, chopping board. <laughs> right. Well, no, it's not. It, no, can, you can, it's not a chopping board. It is a base plate for thing. All right, so it might now, be, now it is because you spent all day yesterday while I was editing last week's video, making it into one. Yeah, and it fits into the footwell. But as I said in last week's video, nylon is nylon. It doesn't matter what its previous life was. Oh. And it actually fits in the footwell. Like a glove. Like a glove. And like all of us previously said, if any water actually did get in there, it's not gonna, if it was a big aluminium base plate it, and it was left for any, any length of time, it could react. But with it, cause it's aluminium, uh, cause it's uh, nylon, no reaction. But it's, we've got polyurethane and stainless steel paint and all that, so it'd be fine. Yeah. Um, and of course, it won't stay like this. It will get lighter. And so they make it easy to keep clean and stuff like that. Um, nothing's getting trapped under it. That's no. the important thing. Right, so if we had, if our, if our sliders were one big sheet or one big chunk, our lives would be really easy right now because we'd be able to bolt sheet onto that Slam that in them, bolt this to that, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, bolted in car, job, done. Job done. Unfortunately, we that is have, not the case. We don't have any 10 mil aluminium. We couldn't get anything more than the 10 mil stuff we've got. So, we've got to bolt our front plate onto our individual sliders perfectly and parallel, 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 parallel. Yeah, parallel. Parallel. They, they have to be. Right. They have to be square and, um, and parallel. Yes. Then we've got to bolt the sliders onto the pedal box. Then we've got to bolt the rails onto the nylon. It all has to be square. It all has to be parallel. Otherwise, it won't slide properly. It's very much the same case as the front plate on our master cylinder pedal boxy arrangement. Yeah. Um, yeah it had to be square and that was totally an, flat. Yeah. That was an absolute pain in the backside to make. And this will be equally painful, if not more. So <laughs> let's get cracking. Otherwise, we will be here forever. Yes. Yes, you beauty. What? I can make a, a board. A facsimile. A facsimile. 
Yeah, last week I used the term allegory, and that's not what I meant. Because if, if it was a literary jig, it would work. <laughs> but, but when it's a physical jig, it's not an allegory. Now, Alan, do us a favour. Watch this video right to the very end, because Mary Ann does loads of beauty shots, and she puts loads of time and effort into making the, the end shots superb. Yeah, it spends like hours to like getting everything just so, and nobody sticks around for them. Yeah, so do Mary Ann a favour and watch it to the very end, please. Yes, and everyone that watches to the end, right, go into the comments and leave a mosquito emoji, um, and then we know you've done it. So we've got our base plate and we've got our, our, our slider mounts and we need to get these exactly, exactly parallel and obviously we're using two, two pieces of aluminium which need to, need to be able to slide up and down freely and obviously if, if one of these mounts is even a tiny bit out, you know, a couple of, you know, four or five out, comma one, comma two of a millimetre it's going to jam, then we'd have to make them smaller and we'd get a little bit of wiggle in it and then it'd be no good. So what I'm going to do is make, I've got a piece of uh, particle board here. So basically I'm going to make a template that fits inside. It's exactly square and exactly the right size. So it holds these two in, in the exact right position. My question to you is, where did you get a piece of particle board from? You know, I don't know. It's just been, it's been, it's one of the things, it's been sat around for ages. I, I, what do you, you don't own anything made of particle, but I can't even know. <laughs> Donna. Yesterday, I've already measured everything up in the, put everything in the footwell and obviously we've had to grind the edge away because the, the way the, the rail comes past. So we've sh I've shaped it to fit so it goes right up snug against the chassis shield. I've chopped this out because we've got the suspension mount um, bulge, cover, yeah. bulge the cover so we can get the nut on the back of, back of the wishbone. Last week, we, it fit perfectly, but once it was raised up 10 mil, we ended up with a load of new problems. Yeah. And so, because we didn't plan on raising it up that much, it'd be, it'd be absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, accommodations have had to be made because yeah. that bulge is a funny shape.
So what I've done, I've put a little center, two little center pop marks in this one, three in this one, and two in this one, just to make sure we get them all in the right rotation. So we get everything back in the same place. We can now, so I've got two center pots there, two there, three in this one. So everything faces up and you can see which way around everything goes. First thing I'm gonna do is mark the first one out, drill and tap it and get it locked into position. And also I haven't counted some of these screw holes yet because if you do what happens is it makes this bit thinner and it makes it more difficult to get the the holes to line up the thicker this is the better because it holds the drill in the correct position So one question we got in last week's comments was, would all of our problems not have been solved by having top hinge pedals? And it's a funny old thing because no matter what strategy you pick, right? Obviously there's many ways to skin a cat. That's what I love about engineering. There's always a way to solve something um, in a different way. And, and both ways can be completely and utterly valid, can't they? Yep. That's, that's the beautiful thing about cars and it's the beautiful thing about engineering. Now then, if we had top hinge pedals, the biggest problem is there's no structure up here to bolt it to. There's actually nothing there. And we get our floor for free. Yeah, which is super <laughs> stiff. You've got to have a floor, it's got to be there. Yeah. <laughs> and it's structural. Yeah, and it's super stiff. And another one of the comments is why, well, did, why, did, why didn't you make the pedal box wider? Well, hang on a minute. Can I just take the first one first, right? And we have a chassis support here that cannot be moved. This piece of box section steel and this fold in this steel cannot be changed. It has to be there for the structure of the chassis, doesn't it? Yeah. And so we've got something there that's super, super stiff and it has to be there and it has to be stiff. And up here, there's no rigidity at all, really. No, it's not because it's not necessary. No, it's impact absorbing, it's, it's other stuff, but it's not stiff because it's not designed to be stiff, right? You want, your, you want your windscreen surround to be stiff, but this is basically just there to stop weather getting in. Yeah, keep the wind out. Yeah. And so there's nothing really to bolt all this to. And this has to be super stiff, and not only that, it's reasonably heavy. So you're raising your center of gravity of your car all the time. Whereas, if our, our pedals being this way about and being at the bottom, they're actually underneath the center point of your wheels. They're super low down. Yeah, and actually giving the car more grip. Yeah, um, well, they're about level with the center point of the wheels, maybe a couple of millimeters lower. The, the ride height's a bit high at the minute, so they should be lower by the time it's all said and done. Um, but not only that, you can buy a Tilton set of pedals or an AP set of pedals and fit them to a car, but it's, they are super adjustable, aren't they? Yeah. Because they, 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 it's the same pedal box, but it's designed to fit a 911, a Mustang, an Escort, a, a whatever you want, a Mini. And so obviously they are super adjustable. There's a million different brackets and adapters and stuff. And it's up to you to set it up, or the person who fits it, yeah. to set it up perfectly. That includes knowing the, the length of your foot, how tall your heel is off the floor to your ankle bone, the length of your leg, your inseam, your seat position, it all has to be taken into consideration to set your pedal box up absolutely perfectly. And as Colin Chapman once said, if you let them adjust it, they will adjust it wrong. Yeah. The beautiful thing about us being able to develop a pedal box for our car is that we can design a pedal box that pivots where our feet are and the way our feet are to how our seat position is. Because if we had a top hinge pedal box, we'd actually have to make like a, a weird foot plate that raises your feet up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because our feet have to be on a box in order for this car to work properly this box um, and so also if you had top hinge pedals you'd be around the steering shaft so you you're causing a load of problems to try and solve a problem and one of our like methods in the, well, one of our madnesses maybe in this car is we're trying to have our cake and eat it yep. whenever possible and so things like um, there was another question of like are you, 
would it not be worth reducing your range and having a slightly smaller fuel tank in order to have more legroom? And, and the answer is that we are doing that. That's why the, the pedals all have to be lent back and level. Yeah. And we can't have them staggered because it's literally the limit of how, <laughs> of how far we can go. Every single pedal will be at its limit and they will all be level and they'll all be lined up together. But there's plenty of room for my feet. And we're not clipping pedals. It's not cramped, is it? No, no, it's tons of room. But there's just no room to waste. Yeah, so let me say we've both got size 12 feet. That's mm. UK size, 46, 47 European size 13 in america and my feet are massively wide they're like a triple g width or something like that they're absurd i've, I've got i've got giant hobbit feet basically <laughs> <laughs> and another another issue that we had another comment that we had was why didn't you make the foot well wider right we have an issue with that our, our bars here are side protection if this wheel ever gets ripped off which it's designed to do in an accident so the chassis stays together but though this these Wishbones actually are, des are designed to get ripped off, right? Or severely bent in an accident and the wheel to fold in. So we've got two crash protection bars here, which form part of the chassis, which stops this coming into the car, right? Which is super important for me because I've got six pins in my leg where that wheel ended up, well, not this particular wheel, but a wheel ended up in there with me. Uh, it's not a good scenario. No. And also we have the radiator here, but we're having a smooth bonnet, right? Which is super aerodynamic. So we need an exit for the hot air from the radiator, which exits down the side here. So all this part, all this structure, not only is crash protection, but it's also designed for aero and for remove heat from the, the front brakes and the radiator. And not only that, you'll find that a lot of air, right, Tires, in fact, this is the, my biggest pet peeve with 98% of the cars that you're going to see at SEMA this year and that you saw at SEMA last year. There's a trend of putting a diffuser on the front of a car that empties right into your front tire and it drives me insane. I want to grab the people who are designing these body kits and shake them, right? Because a tire is a parachute. That's what it is. A tire is the worst dragging thing in your car. And not only that, it causes something called tire squirt, which is a bit like, you know how a supercharger rotates and squeezes the air through, like a root supercharger, right? Well, a tire does the same thing. You get air that hits the front of your tire, and because your tire is rotating, it pulls the air down the tire, and it collects here between the road and the tire. Like a, like a bow wave on a boat. Yes, superb analogy. And then what it does is it fires it out the side under pressure, which ruins all your aerodynamics. So the less of your tire, the less of your wheel that's exposed to the air, the better. So all of these stupid body kits we're about to see on social media, or Instagram and stuff at SEMA, know that every single one of them that has a tire exposed at the front is an absolute buffoon. No matter how good it looks, it's rubbish, right? So every single Le Mans car that you'll ever see for the last flipping 65 years has gone to great pains to cover up, it, you know, everything after, <laughs> after like World War II. <laughs> has its tires covered up. That's how long we've known this stuff. It's not new anything, is yeah. it, right? But your wheel wells also cause a load of lift. You get air stuck in here, which pushes the front end of your in car fact, up. In fact, you've, you've probably seen 911s, and they've got the, 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 the 911 GT3s have got a louvered part here yep. in the front wings. And they've got a big cutout here and a big fin. And the big fin is just to cover up the back of the tire, really. But all of, most cars have a big seam here because they're a monocoque. Um, it's, the, it's the seam that every single drifter bashes the hell out of with a hammer yeah. to, to make tire clearance. But most cars, all your frontal rigidity is in a piece here, right? Most monocoque cars, you'll see if you, it's the thing that they'll brace on an MX-5 when they take oh, them off. Oh, anything with McPherson struts. When they take you, them racing. You know anything with MX-5, anything with McPherson struts yes. has to have a big box section there. And a ton of structural here. And a structural here. here, and it all's got a link into there. Yes. But even stuff like MX-5s, they, a, a, they take the wing off and they put a brace on inside, yeah. right? Now, we, we don't need any of that. But they've all got a load of structure here. 
and that causes a, a load of problems and a load of lift. And if you look at a modern Le Mans car, they've actually got a square cut out over the top of the tyre to let that pressure out. Now, obviously, we're injecting a load of air in the front from our radiator into this space here. And it would cause a load of lift. So what we've got to do, we've got to let the air out that gets trapped around our tyre out and let our cooling air out, which will not only prevent lift, but we want to cause suction. We actually want the area here to be so big that it sucks air from the front of the car, sucking the car forward, exactly the same as the Spitfire and Mosquito aeroplanes. On the wings of a, a, a Spitfire, you'll see there's a radiator box, right? And that radiator box is there because the Spitfire is is, in, is a development of a, a supermarine, isn't it? Yeah. Which is a Schneider Trophy winning seaplane, yeah. um, fastest plane in the world of its of its time. But to make that engine live, they had to turn the entire plane into an air, into a radiator, which sucks when you're getting shot at, <laughs> right? So instead, what they did, they put the radiators in boxes under the wings, and put them inside. A Venturi and that sucks air in the front and then fires it out the back and it actually made the planes faster so when they made the de Havilland Mosquito they actually developed this, that from the Spitfire and they made the Mosquito faster than the Spitfire and, it, and also you've got, you've got to remember that the, the de Havilland Mosquito two Rolls-Royce Merlin engines in. yes not one the Spitfire's only got one but the the Mosquito was a too. hell of a lot faster than the, Mo than the Spitfire. Nothing could catch it, which is why it was one of the greatest planes of World War II, right? But our cooling system works exactly the same as the de Havilland Mosquito, where it pulls air from the front of the car through here and then fires it out along the side of the car, covering up our rear arches. So the fact that we've got curves doesn't matter as much aerodynamically. And not only that, but because you're sucking air from the front of the car, you're effectively reducing your frontal area according to the wind. So even with, though we've got wide arches, we, would, we will be more aerodynamic than if we just had smooth, flat, straight bodywork. Yep. So that's why the pedal box is so small. Yes, <laughs> because it's not just about a pedal box. Everything has to work with everything else. And this is the key to making something that is good, great. So and you've, got to, you've got to remember, we've got one inlet at the front, but we've got two exits because we've got both sides. Yeah. So both sides will be working together. So the, they can, the, the volume of air we can go in, push in through the front is greater, the, the, is, is more space at the back to release yes. it. So the pressure's gonna be lower. And this is why all the people that said we should put fog lights in the mouth, no. Also, fog lights in your mouth suck because when you move lights inboard, they're terrible for turning. So on a country road, when you've got really tight turns, you can't actually see down through the corner. You yeah. can't see your apex. And so our fog lights need to be in front of our front wheels because no air is getting anywhere near them front wheels. In fact, if you go back to look at the old uh, group uh, B Audi Quattro's, where the front spoiler here is, they used to, they used to have Sibby's mounted on the bottom at 45 degrees. Yes, turning lights. Um, turning lights are superb. And that way you can actually see the ditch on the inside of the corner yeah. and you don't drop your wheel in the hole at night. It's in around here, that's very useful. The realities of the Mosquito are such that it won't really go fast enough for 99.99% .99 of its life to make proper use of downforce. So I'm not even going to bother. What I actually want it to be is lift neutral. If it creates a little bit of downforce, that's fine, right? But there's absolutely no point having putting a wing on it. <laughs> that doesn't mean that there isn't benefit to it being low drag or not having a lot of lift. So we want to minimize drag and minimize lift, which handily feeds into the era that our car was designed in because that's 
that's what they were trying to do on the top level when Mosquito was originally penned. The, uh, the cars, the mid to late 60s, early 70s were all trying to minimise drag and minimise lift. So our pedal box is now square to this front edge, which is square to these sides. So Dad found a better throttle return to bring in a box that's like the best of both worlds. Yeah, it's narrower and it's uh, thicker gauge uh, steel, spring and, steel. And it's actually a throttle return spring, not yeah. something else. So yeah, it's perfect, right? So we need a 5mm hole in there. So now we need a 4mm hole in there that now can be tapped 5mm. Super tight. There you go. Look at that for clearance. Mm. Nice though. So that's the first time it's all attached. I can't turn and I'm still <laughs> flopping about. Yeah, it's a thing! My favourite part of making anything is the moment it goes from looking like stuff to looking like a thing. You know what I mean? You know exactly what I mean, don't you? Yep. The second you can actually see it, it's not yeah, just... So instead of being a kit of parts, it's yeah. a whole thing. Yeah. It might not be finished, but it looks like the thing that it's supporting. That now looks like a pedal box. Yep. That looks like a sliding underfoot pedal box. Yep. So I've just got to check now. Look. All our dimensions are as they should be. Check we've done it right. Yep, so <laughs> 84, 84, 63, and 63. So we know, we know, well obviously it slides. It's not got anywhere near enough bolts in it, but it do slide. Yeah. And there's no, there's no sideways movement at all. It's not going like this. It's, it's, it's really got a grip. And what we'll do, we'll spring load it so that when a tiny person gets in the car and actually like, unlocks it, it will slide forward on its own. Because it's easier to push it back yeah. than it is to... Obviously, I don't want Merriam in a car park with the door open. Like this. In a park frock, trying to, trying to pull the pedal box forward. You want to be able to get in, press the button, and it, it come towards your buttery smoothness, don't you? Yep.
So it's usually about this moment when I'm tapping that I breathe into the microphone directly and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> We need to now make a locking mechanism. Yeah, because obviously we can't have our pedal box sliding backwards and forwards under braking. So we need to make some retaining pins and a way of retracting the retaining pins so we can actually move the box. Talking about sliding under braking, years ago I bought some purple wool pants. I know that sounds like the most awful thing ever, but they're actually really nice. Like, like wide leg 1930s suit pants and they're wool and they've got a silk liner. And I found them and I was like, oh, these are, these are amazing. And I, I wore them to take my mum shopping. As you do. And I went to pick my mum up from her place and I had to collect my mum, turn around and come straight back home. Because every, because they're wool and they've got a silk liner. Every time I press the brake pedal, I slid forward. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I had absolutely no control over the car. Every time I went around the corner, I slid to the side. <laughs> it's like low friction. Just woo! Um, so yeah, I, I know the value of staying put while <laughs> staying put while braking. We've got a 12 mil hole on that side, and for now, a four mil hole on that side, which is our stop. That fits in there, our spring goes in there, and then this screws into a specific depth. Right up to the stop. And can you see this, is, this edge is now flush, but the back is the stop. So now this, this part actually stops that bolt from going too far. It's a tricky thing because you want it to not jam, but you also want it, like, like we say, we want it to lock with absolutely no play or wiggle. So these bolts have to be like really secure because you don't want anything that's all slack and baggy, do you? Nope. 
and like that's but we don't too tight either so it actually all jams you know if it's not perfect land it jams up yeah so it's just it's a it's a delicate balance we're getting with the, with the tolerances getting everything just as it should be and we didn't want springs that are super heavy either because you've got to compress obviously you've got to compress two springs to unlock our pedal box and you don't want your partner to be like <laughs> <laughs> needing to be an arm wrestling champion in order, in order to unlock the pedal box to slide it. So at this point in the video, I need to say a big shout out to Andy Wood for being our Slicks tier Patreon. We have three uh, tiers. We have wet, intermediates and slicks. Our Patreons help us follow our passions rather than trying to follow an algorithm so that we can make stuff that we want to make rather than trying to appease some AI overlord. Yeah. Um, so if you'd like to support us and help us make these videos, then you can um, follow us on patreon.com slash the Oliver Picard. Yes, thank you very much. And a huge shout out to the people who leave us super thanks as well because like we appreciate you massively so thank you all for that um so if you see if you see someone down in the comments leaving us a super thanks make sure you give their comment a like as well because uh, they're absolute legends and that you are helping us support helping support us and make these videos Bolts. Bolts, yeah. So we've only got we've only got six bolts, we need eight. We uh, sure to bolts here and we sure to bolts there and, and there. there. So we, it's, yeah. but it's not worth a good it's a forty minute it's a forty minute trip there and a forty minute trip back plus the time you spend. So if we're going by more bolts, it's a morning gone. Mm -hmm. And so, we tend to go shopping at the same time, so then it eats a whole day. Yeah. So what we so what we do is make a big shopping list and generally forget half of it. <laughs> And make a day of it and you really like shopping, don't you, Dad? No, I hate shopping. Well, Dad, what started as some chunks of aluminium, some bolts and a chopping board yeah. is now a pedal box. Yeah. Surprising what you can do with a hacksaw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a ha a, yeah, a hacksaw, a drill and, uh, and a lathe. Yep. But really, really happy with it. It's got a long way to go still. We need to make a top plate, obviously, because you can't, you can't drive around with your feet on master cylinders. And we need to make... A method to pull these two bolts together at the same time and a bunch of other stuff yep but obviously and aesthetically it's got some way to go yeah and it's it's a bit yeah it's, it's a, a bit, bit weighty a bit weighty yeah but well, um not, not overly so eh. but it can be lighter it can it be will lighter. be yes um we have the technology yes <laughs> So thank you to everyone who's watched this episode all the way to the end. Please, as we mentioned at the beginning, if you watch this all the way to the end, we really want to know who's watching these videos like to the end. So include it in your comment. Please leave a mosquito emoji down in the comments below. It's really important for us. It helps us make these videos. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm running a bit of an experiment. Yeah, uh, to make your, make your viewing pleasure even more pleasurable. Yeah, I'm running a bit of an experiment and it helps massively. It's, it's nothing on you it's to do with us and analytics and stuff like that but it should help us make these videos better for you and bring new people and audience to these uh, to these videos who may enjoy them and may find them useful so to everyone who shares these videos on forums and on like uh, piston heads and stuff like that thank you so yeah, much thank you're you absolute much. legends and a huge shout out to everyone who leaves us super thanks and is a member of our patreon as well because you, you like well you're done. helping massively. Well, like, well done, you're helping us build this car and, and that's that's an incredible, incredible thing and everyone who clicks like and all that, you, you're the best. So, thank you. Um, please be awesome for each other. We'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
And the event is for scale. <laughs> You're a good boy, come here. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's... Nah, not mine, not the eyes. <laughs> right. Thanks for watching. Bye.